Hello everyone, I'm David V. Kimball, co-lead of the Legacy TE project. If you are a tournament organizer and are looking for a custom project and build to use at tournaments, stick around. We may just have something for you here. So what is Legacy TE? Legacy TE is a tournament optimized version of Project M 3.6. Rather than replacing vanilla Project M content, it preserves its tournament friendly assets and extends the experience just a bit further. Now before I go on, I should mention Legacy TE is not a continuation of Project M. It is simply a Project M 3.6 mod pack made with tournaments in mind. Here are some of the tournament features built for TE. Launching TE skips straight to the character selection screen, skipping the menus. Holding L while a new name is created will prompt the player to customize their controls. Press X on a player's tag to turn Rumble on or off. A player's tag will be displayed at the result screen. Holding Z and Start at the end of a match will skip the result screen. Challenger approaching is disabled. Now for content. Every character has at least 10 costumes. Wario has 12, as he did in PM 3.6, Sonic has 14 costumes, and Ganondorf, Rob, and Toon Link have 15 costumes. The characters that have 10 costumes in Project M 3.6 have those same costumes. For example, Mario with the Dr. Mario costumes, and Link with the Hero of Time Link costumes. However, an assortment of new costumes have been added, including recolors that allow you to play as your favorite alt costumes in teams. Each new costume has been rigorously tested and have no lag and no bone edits at all. The only replaced costumes from Project M 3.6 are the 7th Roy costume, which has been replaced with Awakening Roy, and all of the Zero Suit Samus costumes, which have been replaced with SJS's revamp. Each character has one additional hidden costume that can be accessed by holding Z at the character selection screen. However, these costumes do not come with cosmetics, so battle portraits, stock icons, and result screen portraits will display the costume you chose at the CSS. In addition, Z costumes override teams, all special modes, and are therefore not recommended for tournament play and are intended to be used just for friendly matches. If there are ever any concerns about any of the costumes that have been added to TE, you can simply encourage players to play as vanilla costumes instead. The base stages in TE are nearly identical to Project M 3.6. The only difference is Bowser's Castle Legal is now the base stage, and the Bowser's Castle with Thwomps is the L alt. Every stage has three alts that can be loaded via button hold. L, Z, and Start. Base stages and Start alts are for the most part all you need to really worry about. If a base stage is widely considered a tournament legal, its Start alt will be a thematic reskin of that stage. Tourney stages Start alts are a one-for-one -one recreation of the base stage. This means they share identical collision data and collision animations, identical blast zone data, identical camera, and identical spawn points with the respective base stage. If a stage is not considered tournament viable, it will still have a start alt, but it will be a one-for-one -one reskin of some other tournament stage. This means every single tournament viable stage has at least one additional thematic reskin option, and in many cases, it has more than one. Every stage in Legacy TE is lagless and has a 3.6 camera. Included community content has been modified to fit this standard. For Australian tournament players, you can find Sky Sanctuary as the Z-Alt for Green Hill Zone, and a one-for-one -one reskin of it as the Z-Alt for Yoshi's Story. If there are ever any concerns about any of the stages that have been added to TE, you can encourage players to simply play on the base stage, which is vanilla Project M 3.6 content. We get it. 
you want your Smash Scenes custom content in your tournament setup. Well, we have good news for you. TE was built to be easily customizable. Feel free to copy your music over, as the songs will appear on the same stages as they did in vanilla Project M. However, keep in mind that the titles of the songs may be inaccurate. You can copy any Project M 3.6 announcer, too. We've included the stock PM 3.6 announcer in the Resources folder. Now let's say you want to add a special costume to the build, say, Theta Shadow Mario costume to TE. Here's how you can easily do this. Simply rename your Shadow Mario costume files to fitmariodark.pack and fitmariodark.pcs. If you copy these files over the existing ones in the Fighters Mario folder, these files will be loaded when you hold Z at the character selection screen. Again, because this is a Z-Alt, however, these costumes won't necessarily be recommended for tournament play. If you'd like to add your own stages or alts, a stage selection screen preview template is available in resources. Remember to replace both a stage's pack files and respective rel files for them to work properly. For reference, underscore Z is the L alt, underscore Y is the Z alt, and underscore X is the start alt. Every stage slot is programmed to have one of each. While this build is primarily designed for use with Wii consoles at local tournaments, it is possible to play online. An alternative version of TE, made for Netplay and Dolphin, is also available, which includes HD textures and special Netplay-specific codes. For the most part, getting TE up and running is the same process as launching Project M. You'll begin by formatting a standard 2GB SD card to FAT32, and then copying these files and folders to the root of the SD card. However, if you notice the folder structure, it's a bit different. Because of this, if you use the homebrew method, you can use a 4GB SD card, or larger, and put both vanilla Project M 3.6 and TE onto the same SD card to switch on the fly at tournaments. This way, if there are any concerns at all about TE, you can reset your Wii and boot vanilla Project M instead. Using USB loader for TE is a bit more of a process. You'll need to rename gc.txt to gameconfig.txt and move it to the root of your SD card. Next, rename Legacy TE to Project M, all one word, all lowercase. Then go into that folder and find the rsbe01.gct file and move it outside. Create a folder called Codes and put that file in the codes folder. Now every file that needs to be loaded can be discovered in its proper directory. We hope you enjoy Legacy TE. Join us in Discord to share your questions, ideas, and wrist strap loosening hype.